When people think of the First World War, they think of soldiers in trenches. They think of mud and blood, of battle and slaughter. We're going to tell a different story. The story of nurses, the women who saved lives. Many worked close to the front lines on what one nurse called the second battlefield. The casualty clearing station, the field hospital, the base hospital. She said it was like working on the edge of a vast, raging ocean. Death was like the tide pulling men under. Nurses were battling to drag them back to life. I'm Christine Hallett, Professor of Nursing History at the University of Manchester. And I study the writings of First World War nurses and write books about their lives and their work. I'm a trained nurse as well as a historian. And I was first drawn to nursing by the story of a First World War nurse, Vera Britton. I was impressed by her courage, by her ability to retain her humanity through years of work in military hospitals. Now, I want to bring the stories of extraordinary nurses like her to the attention of a wide audience. In this series, we will trace the stories of women such as Alice Fitzgerald, an American nurse who was seconded to a British casualty clearing station during the Battle of the Somme and who slept at night in her tent with a tin helmet over her face as shells exploded nearby. Kate Luard, another of our nurses, was head sister of an advanced clinical unit specialising in abdominal wounds, the most lethal type of war injury. And she was based at Brandhook near Ypres during the Battle of Passchendaele. She described how her unit and two others were forced to withdraw to safer ground after a young nurse, Nellie Spindler, was killed by a piece of shrapnel that ripped first through her tent and then through her chest from back to front. For me, what is most compelling about the nurses of the First World War is the way their stories weave personal adventure and sacrifice with extraordinary clinical achievement. Some, such as Edith Cavill, are relatively well known. Others, like Elsie Knocker and Mary Chisholm, the so-called heroines of Pavese, were minor celebrities in their own day, but have been largely forgotten. Elsie and Mary set up a first aid post right behind the Belgian lines in 1914, and stayed for three and a half years, providing emergency care, until they were wounded by a gas attack and forced to give up their work. We'll tell the story of Mary Borden, an American heiress, who set up and funded her own field hospitals in France and Belgium, and who hired fully qualified American, British, Canadian, Australian and French nurses. And of Violetta Thurston, who served in a Russian flying column, a highly mobile unit on the Eastern Front. One of our Australian nurses, Mae Tilton, cared for patients with dysentery and shell shock in an Egyptian base hospital during the Gallipoli campaign. She caught dysentery herself, but hid her illness so that she could continue to care for her patients. We'll tell her story and those of the 36 New Zealand nurses whose ship, the Marquette, was torpedoed and sank in the Aegean Sea. Nurses were crushed as one lifeboat was lowered accidentally on top of another. What holds these stories together is the idea that nurses were fighting their own battles on three fronts. They were fighting for the lives of their patients, but they were also fighting for their own rights as women and for their professional status as nurses.